Hey Ramblers, this video covers chapter 3.2 in our textbook and it deals with the shortcuts for finding the formulas for the derivative of exponential functions. Now we've already learned the power rule which helps us to find the derivative of functions whose exponent is a number we know. So for power functions the base was a variable and the exponent was a number we knew. With exponentials it's just the opposite. So the base is a number we know and the exponent contains the variable. So we're going to learn two shortcuts tonight. One will be just the general shortcut for any exponential function. The second one though is going to be the shortcut for finding the derivative of e. And I know that brings back really bad memories from pre-calculus, but in calculus e is really useful and it might be the easiest derivative formula of all of them. So we'll go through these two shortcuts, so take really good notes, and then at the end we'll practice a couple before uh, wrapping up. So thanks for watching Ramblers, and I hope this helps. Exponential functions come in the form y equals a to the x, where a is the base, and that is a number that we know, and our variable resides up in the exponent, it's x. Now this was different than the power functions which were the form y equals x to the n. The base there was the variable, and the exponent was a number, like 2 or 3, that we knew. So the power rule does not apply in these situations, because it's just not the same kind of function, so we can't use it. Instead, we have to use a brand new shortcut, and we get that from using the definition of derivative. So let's take the derivative of an exponential function and plug it into the limit as h goes to 0 of a to the x plus h minus a to the x over h. Now be careful, I'm not showing you this so that you have to go through all these steps every time you take the derivative. The idea is to just get to the end and see the shortcut so that we can use it. If we try to um, work with this, it's not gonna, I'm not going to be able to, to get very far just because you really don't have enough math under your belts. So let's work with um, a number we know. Like, let's take the derivative of 2 to the x. And that's going to equal the limit, as h approaches 0, of 2 to the x plus h minus 2 to the x all over h. Now, I can rewrite that. And excusing the limit just for a minute, this would equal 2 to the x times 2 to the h minus 2 to the x. Now think about why that is. You'll remember that when we multiply like bases, we add exponents. So if we're already adding them, I can kind of break them into two bases with separate exponents, and I get this expression here on the on the right. Now if we plug in 0 at this point to solve for the limit, we're going to get 0 over 0, which tells us to do something. So I'm going to try factoring out a 2 to the x. And when I do, I'm left with 2 to the h minus 1 over h. Now let's stop there, because this portion of the limit I can evaluate separately. And 2 to the x, since it doesn't have any h in it, is just going to stay 2 to the x. So really this whole limit is going to depend upon what's inside this parentheses. So I've done a little work on a calculator and I can show you what 2 to the h minus 1 over h equals. As you can see, 2 to the h minus 1 over h. As we start coming towards 0 from the negative side, starts approaching something like 0.693. And as I come towards 0 from the right side or from the positive side, I'm also going to 0.693. Now, I recognize that 0.693 is roughly equal to the natural log of 2. Now, I wouldn't expect you to pick that up, but to explain this in any more detail would just really get to be a very dull video. 
So what does this mean? It means that this limit of 2 to the x times 2 to the h minus 1 over h, in fact, that equals 2 to the x times the natural log of 2. There's no h involved at all. So it looks like if I'm trying to take the derivative of 2 to the x, I just take 2 to the x times the natural log of 2. And I've tested this, and it works. If I was taking the, the uh, derivative of 5 to the x, it would equal 5 to the x times the natural log of 5. What do you think the derivative of 7 to the x would equal? It would be 7 to the x times the natural log of 7. Okay, let's get this shortcut into your notes. So if I'm taking the derivative of a to the x, which means any number, it's going to equal a to the x again times the natural log of a. Now let's look in particular if we were to go to the derivative of the most common exponential function, e to the x. Well, that would just equal e to the x times the natural log of e. Now, as we've covered many times in this class, the ln of e, that just equals 1. So, in fact, the shortcut is that it equals e to the x. So let's get this in your notes also. The derivative of e to the x equals e to the x. And it's the only function I know that's like that. And that should make a little bit of sense. Yeah, I'm sure you recall the, the um, function e to the x looks like any other exponential function. But if you were to try and sketch the derivative of that, you would have to sketch a number, or I'm sorry, You'd have to sketch the slopes would be very close to 0, and then they would begin to get steeper, and then they would get, in fact, very steep. So you can understand how the derivative would look, in this case, like the original function. Okay, Ramblers, let's try a couple of examples, and then we'll wrap up the video. Let's take this first example of 5 to the x minus 4 to the x. And I should say, we're trying to take the derivative of that. So it's just going to equal 5 to the x times the natural log of 5 minus 4 to the x times the natural log of 4. What could be easier? Let's tr well, let's try a second one. If we were to take the derivative of this, we're going to need to use a couple formulas. We're going to have to use the constant multiple rule and the sum and difference rule. So let's just go through it piece by piece. Why don't you answer it on Zaption and then we'll go over the answer together. Okay, it's going to equal 2 times the derivative of 3 to the x plus 5 times the derivative of e to the x. Now as you get faster at this, you may not have to write out all these steps, but that's just going to be 2 times 3 to the x times the natural log of 3 plus 5 times e to the x. Okay, let's try one more. Try this one and pause the video, give it a try on Zaption, and then we'll uh, look at the answer. Okay, here we are combining the power rule together with the exponential rule, and we get e, I'm sorry, 3x squared minus 5x times the natural log of 5 plus 3e to the x. E, the derivative of e to the x just couldn't be simpler. And so there's your final answer. Ramblers, um, I hope this helped. Thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for watching.